Now we have resources that will support our counties. Close to 29 billion shillings will be made available by this uh, piece of legislation that has now become law. It will support our counties to discharge their mandate, which is very clear in our constitution. And because the counties are carrying out mandate assigned to them by the constitution, and it is our responsibility to mobilize resources and support the counties. I must say that um, we continuously are working towards making sure that whenever we have resources, it is shared between the two levels of government equitably so that every level of government can discharge their responsibilities. The week before, we paid about 31 billion shillings to our counties. We are again planning in the next uh, week or two to pay another substantial amount of money, again, to support our counties for them to discharge their responsibilities. I'm also very happy that counties are beginning to also look at other avenues of raising resources. And I want to congratulate governors who are continuously increasing their own source of revenue funds, because that way we make counties discharge their responsibilities without too much intervention and too many hurdles. We know there has been an outstanding matter of some counties that did not have appropriate headquarters because they were small and they couldn't raise resources from their shareable revenue to be able to do the county headquarters. The government has now made it possible for us to complete that project because uh, the 450 million that we have now allocated to the five uh, counties, that money is sufficient to complete the county headquarters in the five counties. Additionally, because we are now moving into the planting season and God has been gracious to us, we have sufficient rain. There will be resources also to support our fertilizer subsidy program that is going to assist our farmers across the country. And I want to ask our farmers, as the fertilizer is made available, let us use the seeds, the fertilizer that has been made available for us to be able to grow food in our country because it is the only way we can get rid of the shame of hunger in our nation. I want to congratulate farmers across Kenya. Last year, in their activities, we managed to raise the level of food security in our country. We managed to uh, grow more food last year. Maize alone went up from 44 million bags to 67 million bags. Last year also, um, we got 500 metric tons of uh, cotton seed. And I'm very happy that again this year, the government of Kenya is going to supply additionally 500 metric tons of cotton seed. And the price of cotton has now been increased from 52 to 72 shillings a kilo. Continuously, we want to eliminate the importation of cotton uh, into our country so that we can make fabric here and the exports from Kenya must have cotton that is grown by our farmers, even from our special economic zones. Last year, we provided seeds for um, sunflower because edible oil is one of the big tickets that is consuming our foreign exchange. And it is our plan to reduce the purchase of edible oil, where we spend close to a billion dollars every year. We want to reduce that to 50% in the next three years, and in five years to eliminate completely the importation of edible oil into Kenya. Because we believe that sunflower, canola, soya, and palm oil, once we have rolled out fully, their development in Kenya will give us 
uh, the requisite amount for us to reduce and to eliminate eventually importation into Kenya. It is our commitment as a government that progressively the 500 billion Kenya shillings we use to import sugar, wheat, maize, rice, edible oil, we will reduce it to zero in the next five years so that we can save on our foreign exchange and we can empower our farmers by buying from them instead of buying from farmers from elsewhere. So let me uh, first take this opportunity to congratulate both houses of parliament for executing their legislative duty in a manner that uh, has given us in the executive, both at the national and at the county level, the opportunity now to expend these 46 billion Kenya shillings that will go into uh, various interventions in, in government. First, let me also congratulate the Council of Governors for working with us and the National Assembly and the Senate to make it possible for us to agree on moving these bills forward. The decision by the Council of Governors to withdraw court matters that had become a stumbling block on this issue is a very welcome development and it goes to the spirit of both levels of government working together and both levels of government working also with the legislature so that we can find mechanisms of us working together without the acrimony that comes with taking ourselves to court. It is um, our collective decision to find ways of working together harmoniously finding consensus on matters that are difficult and listening to one another. Your Excellency's trade and investment remains one of the strongest pillars of our bilateral relations anchored within the African Union mechanisms and framework, including the free movement of persons, protocol, and the Africa continental free trade area. The African continent remains a priority trading platform for us all, as demonstrated by the AFCTA, with 98% of our countries having already ratified and are on course to implement. Kenya, one of the pilot countries in the implementation of the AFCTA, exported its first goods of locally made car batteries and tea to Ghana in October 2022. We recognize the need to collaborate in mapping beneficial strands in the economic and trade engagements between our countries towards the full realization of the Africa, Africa continental free trade area as the apex of regional integration. This is guided by the belief that it is possible to foster increased volumes of trade among African countries by jointly working to eliminate barriers emanating from closed borders, strict visa requirements, and closed airspace to facilitate the free movement of persons and goods to elevate our trade and economic growth. Your Excellencies, I am happy to note that under the framework of the African Union, Kenya was honored to host, on behalf of the African Union, the fifth media coordination meeting, that is in July 2023, and the inaugural Africa Climate Summit in September 2023. I wish to extend my appreciation to each and every one of you for the support you accorded us that made the two conferences successful and with good outcomes for our region. Climate change threatens the lives and livelihoods of over 100 million people in extreme poverty in our continent. Global warming 
has contributed immensely to the reduction of water. Uh, reduction in water is essential for agricultural production, causing food insecurity, poverty, and population displacement. In Kenya alone, more than three million people live with food insecurity, and many have been displaced. Climate change is a global problem requiring global solutions, but Africa is enduring the most of this crisis. The inaugural Africa Climate Summit of 2023 held in Nairobi served as a basis for Africa's common position in the global climate change process to COP28 and beyond. Subsequently, both the Nairobi Declaration of 2023 and COP28 laid ground for a swift, just, and equitable transition underpinned by deep emissions, cut, and scaled-up climate finance. It is high time that we as Africa take bold steps and take lead in actions that are geared to mitigating rising impact of climate change by taking personal initiatives to plant trees and increase tree cover purposefully, push for sufficient allocation of our national budgets to the kitty for management and prevention of disasters that arise from climate change. As you are aware, the government of Kenya is committed to planting trees, more than 15 billion trees <laughs> by 2032. I salute you, the African Diplomatic Corps, who participated on the National Tree Planting Day on 13th November 2023. We have an obligation to safeguard our continent for our future generation and the time to do so is now. <laughs>